Welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. I'm Bob Delaney, Executive Director of the Institute for Labor Studies and Research. Labor Vision, a production of the Institute, focuses on topics of importance to working Rhode Island families. We hope you enjoy this evening's edition. Good evening and welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. My name is Jim Riley. I'll be your host tonight. Tonight, my guest is Chris Colacci, General Counsel over at UNAP, which is currently involved in bargaining with uh, Fatima Hospital in North Providence. This is a for-profit hospital owned by Prospect Care. Bad guys. So, Chris, give us an update about the bargaining with Prospect Care. Uh, so the update is, uh, which is always the update in dealing with Prospect Medical Holdings, is that things are not going well. This is a, um, a for-profit corporation. Uh, they come from California, so they're not from our state. Uh, they bought the hospital, Fatima Hospital and Roger Williams back in 2014, have owned it since. Uh, and we're having a hard time moving contract negotiations along because we're trying to address issues related to employee and patient safety and health. Mm. And they are doing the best they can to hide uh, as much as they can about the poor conditions at that hospital right now, which is why we have the National Labor Relations uh, Board um, investigating them. Oh, okay. So you're, this is, I mean, this is uh, pretty overwhelming. You're telling me that one of the major issues involved in these negotiations is the safety of your own members from assaults from patients? Imagine that. So what we have, Jim, is uh, we had asked for information uh, about incident reports that employees uh, are required to file in the hospital if there is something that's untoward. And uh, we discovered that 150 or more incident reports had been filed. And we said to Prospect, we want to take a look at them to find out what the issues are. They only gave us a summary of the incident reports, not the incident reports themselves. And the summary data they provided revealed that 50 of our members, 50 of them, uh, were victims of physical assault over about a 20-month period of time between 2016 and 2018. Uh, and so um, we asked for the incident reports themselves. We wanted to find out where the assaults were taking place, the severity of them, we wanted to question Prospect about what measures, if any, they've taken to correct this problem. Uh, and they've stonewalled us, which is why we filed a charge at the NLRB, National Labor Relations Board, a charge that is currently under investigation. Uh, one other thing I'll quickly say to you is that we also got data from them that there was a 60% increase in injuries to employees from moving patients in fiscal year 16. And when we asked Prospect to provide the data for 27 and 2018, 2017, 2018, they refused to provide it. So we filed a second charge with the NLRB, which is also under investigation at the moment. So you look at that stuff and, and you start to get concerned that what Prospect is up to is hiding the details of these injuries and assaults on em employees, uh, which is a troubling thing. No, it's it's, it's a public asset. We ought to know what's going on inside. So what's the plan moving forward? Are you planning on taking, but, but, but let me ask you this first. Is there an expiration date on this contract? Contract expires tonight at midnight, January oh. 31st of 19. Okay. Well, if I was prospect care, I would take a good look at what happened at Rhode Island Hospital uh, recently with the UNAP and, you, and the wonderful support that you got from your employees. That was a historical uh, strike. All of us in labor movement were proud to be members of, of, of union organized labor based on, on, on what you, the work that you guys did and the incredible strength and support from your membership. So uh, are you planning on uh, a striking since we're at midnight tonight, we're going to be uh, expiration of a contract? Well, I can, uh, I can assure uh, the public that there will not be a strike there when we all wake up in the morning tomorrow. Uh -huh. uh, the union reserves the right to strike that place. What we have been doing uh, for several months now is running a corporate campaign and a public campaign against Prospect, basically speaking publicly through uh, TV, print, uh, radio spots, leafleting, informational picketing to uh, make Rhode Islanders aware 
of what uh, Prospect is doing with this hospital. There's another issue that they have been dodging with us, and that is that uh, an outside commission that is supposed to survey hospitals in the state did a survey of Fatima Hospital back in the fall of 2017 and found 30 deficiencies that they required Prospect to correct. We asked Prospect to provide details about the deficiencies. Their response uh, was what it always is, we're not gonna give it to you. Uh, we filed a charge with the NLRB. The NLRB found merit to it. They sued Prospect. We had a trial last July and we're awaiting a decision for the administrative law judge. So we're running a corporate campaign to make the public aware of this. But if and when the time comes that we decide that it's gonna take more than that, we certainly reserve the right to strike that place. And we will take them on any time, any day, just like we took on Lifespan. You have proven to the industry that your people will walk. We will walk and uh, we'll do anything else that's required. We have gone after Prospect in the General Assembly. Uh, they tried to advance a couple of pieces of legislation last session. Uh, we're proud to say that we made sure that that legislation went nowhere. We asked state reps and senators to stand with the working families of Rhode Island and not this corporate entity that's not even from this state, and they agreed to do that. So whether it's, whether it's uh, uh, interfering with their legislative agenda or their effort to, to squeeze another dollar out of that place at the expense of employees and patient safety uh, or going on strike or picketing, or whatever it is, will be on them uh, uh, now until the end of time, until they change their behavior. Terrific. Well, you're keeping the board busy, aren't you? Keeping the board busy. <laughs> I was an organizer for many years. <laughs> I used to keep the board busy, too. Yeah. So where do these prospect properties rate when it comes to care? Uh, are these facilities that should be first choices right now? Uh, are, are there metrics that say otherwise? Well, uh, my answer to that question, Jim, would be as follows. We represent over 600 folks there, from the RNs to the CNAs to wow. the unit secretaries to the people in the laundry and the kitchen and dietary, uh, phlebotomists in the lab, all sorts of folks. And what we've been telling the public is that, look, when you're in that hospital, our guys are working hard and they will always have your back. The problem is the owners of the place, not the people who work there. So we still encourage folks to go there because we believe the people we represent are gonna be providing quality care. What we want the public to do is recognize that Prospect is shortchanging folks. But I would say that in terms of metrics, if you wanna call it that, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid basically came down hard on Prospect at both Roger Williams and Fatima, the two hospitals they own, and reduced their reimbursement rates for fiscal year 2018. And the reason they did it is we, because those two hospitals operated by Prospect finished in the bottom quartile of 3,300 hospitals surveyed across the country when it came to patient injury and infection. So imagine that. You got this for-profit squeezing to get every dime they can out of that place. And as a result, CMS says, wait a minute, these infection rates, these injury rates, the patients are too high. We got to reduce your uh, reimbursements for that. And similarly, just across state lines in Connecticut at Waterbury Hospital, CMS reduced the reimbursement rates in fiscal year 18 and 19 for prospect down there because of high re readmission rates, meaning people are discharged, patients are discharged, and then they're readmitted. Now, last time I checked, when you leave the hospital, it's because you're well. Yeah. And you shouldn't be going back. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a problem there in terms of, I'll use your word, the metrics and the quality of care that they're providing. I, I still would put your trust in the people we represent over there. Yeah, well, they're doing a great job, but they're being ill-led, as we say. So tell us why these properties have suffered in quality re recently. They certainly weren't always like this. I mean, people, uh, 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 union members, uh, especially in the healthcare industry, that's, that's a real commitment. You're taking care of people's health. It's not like, you know, I was, an, I, I was a meat cutter. Uh, I wasn't involved with living things. I was involved with things that were already gone. And, and, and a lot of things, the building trades, things like this. But healthcare workers, there's something special and something unique about that commitment, much like teachers. Something very special about it because nobody in the healthcare industry that does the kind of work that our members do, uh, no, nobody's getting wealthy. Uh, and the work is really, really hard and they're really committed to it. And by the way, they work 24 seven. You're talking about the first shift, the second shift, the third shift. And the reason we think why things are deteriorating in this for-profit setting is, take a prospect for example, the business model is simple. We come in, 
We're trying to drive down the labor costs by laying people off, subcontracting work, reducing pay and benefits, which makes it impossible to recruit and retain qualified people. And you do it because you got to answer to the private equity firm that's underwriting your business model. So Prospect is underwritten by Leonard Green. They want a return on their investment. However they get it, they don't care. And by the way, Moody's just reported a downgrade in some of the bond ratings for Prospect because they made a $600 million dividend payment to shareholders. So when you divest that money from the hospital and from equipment and supplies and top-notch staff and the like, what happens? The quality measures go down. And there's no mystery to what's going on in for-profit medicine and Prospect at the forefront of that. Chris, you mentioned that the board had uh, found for you in one of the cases here. Are there still a couple of outstanding uh, charges that haven't been resolved? We've got two charges that are outstanding now trying to get a hold of this information for employee patient safety. They're under investigation. Uh, the board has not decided whether or not to sue Prospect yet. Um, I think they're going to go in our direction. Uh, so in addition to that trial we had in the summer of last year, we got these charges pending now. We're waiting for the board to make a decision on whether or not they're going to go forward. Okay. Um, how is it e easy? Is it working or difficult working with uh, Prospect? Are they bargaining in good? Do you think they're bargaining in good faith? And do you think you'll ever get to the point of negotiating true terms? I think we'll get uh, to the point of negotiating true terms because we're going to make them negotiate true terms. Mm -hmm. um, we're uh, going to be in their grill from now until the end of time. So they'll come around. They'll come around simply because we can hurt them. Um, but it's like pulling teeth with them because, you know, they're not interested in harmonious labor relations with us or anybody else. They're interested in making a quick buck and passing that along to Leonard Green and to their shareholders. But, shareholders. but um, I assure you that uh, our union has a proud history. We're strong. We know how to throw a punch. We're not going to take any you-know-what from anybody, including Prospect. We're going to stay on them. Everywhere they go, we will be there. And they'll modify their behavior enough for there to be a decent contract here. I'm pretty confident of that. Now, you talked about a corporate campaign. I want to get back to that. Um, look, there's a lot of people that uh, don't really know what's going on over <clears> there uh, with, the, with the problems that your, your members are having uh, with these assaults and, uh, and bad faith bargaining by their employer. What, 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 are, what are we going to see? What is the public going to see in your corporate campaign leading up to hopefully a, re a resolve in this before we actually have to go on strike? So uh, you'll see uh, more of what we've started, and that is, is that we do, a not, uh, do we do a lot of radio uh, ads exposing prospect for all the shortcomings that I've discussed on your program today. Um, we will do uh, TV ads. Have you done any ads yet? Uh, we just finished a two-week uh, uh, radio spot attacking them for their role in the collapse of the St. Joe's pension plan. They've been oh, sued in state and federal court yeah. over that as well. That's big. So we just ran two weeks' worth of radio spots on that. We'll be going up with more radio spots on the health and safety issues. Um, you'll see a lot of print stuff that we'll put out. <clears throat> we just started doing mass uh, leafleting at all of their outreach centers all over the state. We'll do more informational picketing. We'll submit op-ed pieces. We'll appear on shows like yours. Uh, we've, we've appeared on several other shows uh, in the state. We've done mailings into the General Assembly. We'll probably start targeting the City Council in North Providence, which, where Fatima sits. Uh, so those are uh, quite a few of the elements of the campaign uh, that Rhode Islanders will see unfold over the course of the next weeks and months. Um, has <clears throat> the company, Prospect Care, uh, have they uh, answered uh, to, to this media campaign you've had? Are they doing anything on their own? Uh, remarkably, they've done very little uh, uh, in terms of responding to uh, the press coverage we got on our picket last week. They had a, a spokesperson put out a statement saying that they thought that the picket was premature and that they look forward to getting back at the table. They did not refute our claims of health and safety problems. So they're, they're really not responding. Okay. Chris, it's been great to have you on the show again. If I was Prospect Care, I would be wanting to, to get to the end of this real quick because you guys have proven that your members will stick with you. Thanks a lot, brother. Jim, thanks All for having us. You. All right, my friend. And that's it for this edition of Labor Vision. See you next time.
Good evening and welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. My name is Jim Riley. I'll be your host for this evening's show. You know, on this show, we tackle a lot of issues that have to do with organized labor. We talk about uh, private sector unions, public sector unions. We get involved many times with the building trades and their issues. But I'm really excited about tonight's show because it's, a re it's, it's something different, but it's something fun and interesting. And, and I think you're going to really, really enjoy it because tonight's guest is Ed Plunkett, who is the president of the Providence, Providence Federation of Musicians, Local 198 457. Welcome, Ed. It's great to have you on the show here today. I've seen your bands many times at different events around Rhode Island. Um, first of all, just give us a little, a little background of you, yourself, personally, and how you got involved in the music industry. And then we'll talk about the history of the... Of the uh, sure. Well, first of all, Jim, I want to thank you for your courtesy and generosity in, in inviting us to be on your program today. And I Thank really you. appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, as for myself, uh, my mother was a piano teacher, and she said, you will learn to play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was a young kid, that didn't sit very well. I wanted to be outside playing with my friends. Mm -hmm. But as I got to be a teenager, I began to appreciate it much more. And, and at, from that point on, decided I really wanted to spend my life playing and making music. So that's my personal background. But I'd like to talk about our union, uh, which has a very, very interesting history. Oh. Uh, we are uh, a local union of the American Federation of Musicians. The American Federation of Musicians was founded in 1896, primarily to address the problems that were happening in theaters all around the United States, and particularly in the major cities like uh, New York, Chicago, uh, um, and Boston. Uh, the very first local union was chartered in Cincinnati, Ohio in 1897. That was Local One. And the Providence Federation of Musicians was chartered five years later in 1902 as Local 198. So that you can see between 1897 and 1902, there was a lot of union organizing going on among musicians. Of course, in those days, everything was a lot different. People uh, didn't own automobiles. The public didn't own automobiles. Neither did uh, musicians. And everyone took the streetcar to where they were going. That, of course, is different today. But our union has been around since 1902. Uh, we've been through uh, some consolidations. Uh, the music business obviously has changed. Uh, but we're still there we're representing musicians. And uh, our goal is to provide musicians with representation, contract protection, social benefits, and things of that nature. Tell us something about the, the, a few examples of the kinds of music that your members play. We represent musicians who perform all types of music. Uh, we represent symphonic players, including the Rhode Island Philharmonic Orchestra members. Uh, we represent uh, theater musicians, including those who play uh, in the pit orchestras at Providence Performing Arts Center ah. in Providence. Uh, also, the musicians who perform with the Rhode Island Civic Chorale and Orchestra. Uh, we represent uh, musicians who do what's called casual work. In other words, the typical party, banquet, wedding, social event of that nature. We represent a lot of jazz musicians, hardcore jazz musicians, softcore jazz musicians. We represent musicians who play nightclubs, lounges, uh, people who play in marching bands, uh, all kinds of musicians. So, and we have rock, rock and roll musicians, uh, cover bands. So it, we, we've got everybody in the mix, and everybody is available. And so we would certainly appreciate any interest by the public in hiring our members. It would be greatly appreciated. I understand uh, they have, what is it, a carnival uh, cavalcade of bands. Yes. I, I've heard about <laughs> it. I haven't attended, but I'm going to go this year. You know what I'm going to do this year? This one, I'm actually going to take dancing lessons oh, at the you. Fred Astaire Excellent. Dancing School in Excellent. Warwick. Excellent. And I want to go there and, and, and actually have some fun dancing. Good for you. Just like my parents did back in the day. Well, we'll my mother was, uh, started the dance school in 1939. It's still well, around today. We'll certainly welcome you there. Yeah. So but, uh, tell us about the cavalcade. Well, the, the, ca the cavalcade of bands is uh, a fundraising event, uh, both for our local itself and also for our health and welfare fund to help out our members. Uh, it's been in existence for about 30 years, and it's uh, run and managed by our vice president, Al DeAndrade, who has done an outstanding job over the years. 
uh, we present, we, we run it at Rhodes on the Patuxet in Cranston, and we present a variety of bands and entertainment all evening long. Uh, in the ballroom of Rhodes, we have a big band playing swing music of the 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, alternating with a small group. Uh, out in the foyer, we, there are two stages on either side of the room, and uh, there will be a band on each side, uh, alternating for about 45 minutes or an hour on each side. But it's not just two bands. We have six bands during the course of the night. So one band plays here, the second band plays on the other side, a third band comes in, a fourth band on the other side, five and six. It's quite an event. We have really 70 or 80 musicians performing in one evening. And for the price of the ticket, it, it's something you could never uh, purchase on the outside in a commercial venue. You know, I'm thinking maybe I should start my dancing around the time the last band comes. I don't think I could last, <laughs> last all that time at my age. But what a lot of fun for folks. And this, is, is, great this is great music. These, these ensembles, these orchestras, they're playing the stuff that, that you know, the Frank Sinatra used to sing along to and Dinah Shore and Steve and Edie and all yes. those great, great singers and, uh, and groups. Uh, from back in the day, but we're still doing that, and it's still, it still sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Well, we're catering to, it does sound wonderful, we're catering to uh, an audience, mostly of ballroom dancers, and this is the music they want so that they can do their ballroom dancing. Mm. But we do have other bands from time to time. We have what are called cover bands, covering rock and roll hits or 80s bands. Uh, we have uh, Sinatra imitators. So it, there is a mix, a good mix at the event. We run three of these a year. Uh, the first one this year is going to be Tuesday, April 30th. There will be a second one uh, at a date to be ter determined, most likely in August, and probably the third one will be in November of this year. And these all take place at Rhodes, Rhodes on the Patuxet. Patuxet and they, historically, they have been for many, many years. I'm yes. sure that some of our uh, <clears throat> viewers uh, uh, probably uh, know that and have been to this uh, this great event uh, over the years. Oh, yes, we've had great I'm definitely going to be there this year, oh, I'm telling you. I've that's gotta... wonderful. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it's not like you haven't been there before uh, uh, for notable occasions, uh, but can you give our viewers the idea of some of the events your members have played over the years besides the cavalcade? Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, our, our symphonic players perform in the Rhode Island Philharmonic. Uh, and the Rhode Island Civic Chorale and Orchestra. Many of them also are substitute players with the Boston Symphony Orchestra ah. and the Boston Pops uh, Orchestra. But we, uh, uh, we have some rather uh, well-known individuals who have come out of the Providence area, Rhode Island area, I should say. I, yeah, be, and, I think our and viewers I, would be interested to, yeah, to I, hear I, who those I mean, folks are. Some of these go, it must uh, be a long list, and we don't want to it hear is them all. A, it is a long list. I don't know if I can get, it, no, get through no, it all. No, but no, this is going to be go, fun for our viewers. Go, going back uh, historically, back into the 1930s and 40s, the Frankie Carl, the famous oh, pianist, sure. who was from the north end of yeah. Providence, he wrote a hit song back in the 40s called Sunrise Serenade, and I think he was the house band at the Waldorf Astoria in New oh. York. He was from our local. Bobby Hackett, the famous jazz trumpet player, yeah. who made a, a number of recordings in the 1950s with Jackie Gleason, that was from Providence, and used to visit here quite a bit, come back to play with his friends here in Rhode Island. Uh, Art Tancredi was one of our band leaders. He was a trumpet player with the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra, and he also led uh, his own big band for many years at the Alhambra Ballroom in Crescent Park over in East Providence. Um, George Massa is one of our great uh, members who is still with us, uh, still performing, still writing music. He had played with Benny Goodman and the uh, world's greatest jazz band mm -hmm. and is still an active musician. Uh, our former president, Artie Cabral, many people know Artie, he was a fabulous, fabulous drummer, played with uh, the Woody Herman big, big band, played with all the famous jazz names that had come into Rhode Island for many years. Uh, worked most recently with Mickey Rooney before Mickey passed out. Ah. And of course, I think our premier member at this time currently is the great pianist Mike Renzi, uh, who uh, by any standard is probably the, the best vocal accompanist in the United States at this time. Wow. And you can, you can uh, judge that by the names of the people he's worked with. He worked on Broadway with Lena Horne. Uh, he's worked with Mel Torme. Jack Jones, Maureen uh, McGovern, 
Uh, most recently, he spent three years on the road with Tony Bennett and performed with Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga at the Grammy Awards several oh, years ago. Sure. Um, another uh, member who unfortunately is not with us is Al Conti, who mm -hmm. uh, had, that name? had the band for 30 years at the Dunes Club down in Narragansett. Oh. And he had played uh, when he was young with the Guy Lombardo Orchestra. So let me, let me just ask you this. Um, you're here today talking about the uh, Providence Federation of Musicians. And uh, I think that this is an organization, and you agree with that, that should be growing. Mm -hmm. um, what would benefit individuals, uh, musicians, or collective, collective group of musicians, band? What would, what would, why would they want to join? What kind of benefits do they well, get from joining the Providence what, Federation what, of Musicians? What we have to offer uh, is contract protection. That is the number one thing, and it is so important today. And I want to clarify, many people think that the Musicians Union is a booking agency and that we can get work for people. That's not what we do. We're here to ensure that uh, musicians are treated fairly, they're treated with respect, and that if they run into a problem on an engagement, they have recourse through a written contract that's going to be enforced by the Musicians Union. I also am very concerned about the many musicians who go out into recording studios and do what it, what is termed a dark recording, mean that there, meaning that there is no contract in force, they have no legal protection, they're never gonna get a penny in royalties. If they come through the union and make sure, we make sure that a union contract is filed, these musicians will get royalties and be rewarded for their intellectual property that is what they have uh, uh, produced in the recording studio. So th that is an important issue for musicians. We're very, very, very geared up towards electronic media and protecting musicians' rights. I've heard a lot of stories, I think we all have, uh, of people that uh, wrote songs, played songs, and because of some, some stipulation, uh, yes. in, in, a, in a, because there was no contract or something yes. they signed, they wound up not getting hundreds or, of thousands, maybe, if not millions or, of dollars. Or, or being forced to sign a waiver that they don't, didn't really understand. How do people get in touch with you to join your organization? Please go to our website, www.promusicri.org. You can, you can do two things. You can look at the benefits we offer and join our local. You can also uh, hire our musicians. On the left side of our web, front web page, there is a pick called Hire Our Musicians. Please click on that and it will take you to a page that lists all the bands and orchestras we have available. And please, please hire our musicians. We would greatly appreciate it. And what's, the, what's that website once again? www.promusicri.org. Well, that's fantastic. So it's been terrific having you on the show, Ed. It's been my pleasure. Thank and, you so uh, much. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the Cavalcade of Bands. I'll keep and my by IP the way, up for you know you. Al Al Al, Al DeAndre, mm -hmm. uh, terrific uh, uh, Dixieland yes, band. Yes, absolutely. Um, is he going to be playing as well? I think the, uh, he'll probably play the last set. Uh -huh. He has his hands. Yes, that's uh, when I'll be getting out of the he, he has his hands full earlier in the evening managing everything, but but he usually participates in the last set and has a chance to play. That's great. Yes. And I also saw. Uh, uh, I, I was at the uh, uh, Rhode Island Heritage uh, yes. Hall of Fame, yes. and you guys played there, as you historically yes. do play there. Yes. And it was terrific, terrific music. Well, I'm glad you liked I really it. really enjoyed it. And uh, uh, we're going to have to have you back on the show again, because there's so much to talk about, and I don't know if we <laughs> covered everything. But uh, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, Jim. All the best Appreciate to you, it. my friend. The same to you. Thank you. And that's it for this week on Labor Vision. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Labor Vision. We appreciate your input and encourage your comments. Labor Vision can be seen on this channel three times each week, Tuesday at 7 p.m., Thursday at 8 p.m., and Saturday at 5 p.m.